Update 2 for Articulate Studio 13 is out and it's packed with new features, enhancements, and bug fixes. In this video, we'll take a quick look at some of those new features. The big story for Update 2 is that you can now deliver your e-learning content to anyone, anywhere. All languages are now supported, including right-to-left scripts, like Hebrew and Arabic, and double-byte character sets for complex Eastern languages like Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. In fact, to help you localize content, we added translation features to Presenter, Quizmaker, and Engage. Just export your text strings to a document, have someone translate it, then import it back in. Let me show you how. We'll start with Quizmaker and Engage, and come back to Presenter in a moment. In Quizmaker, you'll come up to the round Articulate button in the upper left corner, scroll to Translation, and click Export. This lets you export all the text strings from your quiz to either a Word document or an XML file. When you do, you'll get a document that looks something like this if you export it to Word, and you'll translate everything in this second column. Then you'll return to Quizmaker, go back to the Articulate menu, Translation, and Import, and you'll just bring that file right back into Quizmaker. Engage is much the same. You'll come up to the Articulate menu, Translation, Export, translate the document, and then import it back in. Now Presenter is a little bit different. In PowerPoint, you'll come over to the Articulate tab on the ribbon, click Translate, and then export the document. The difference with Presenter is that only Articulate related items like slide titles, navigation buttons, player tabs, and your embedded quizzes and interactions will be translated. Your PowerPoint slide content and notes will need to be translated separately. You can use Microsoft's built-in translation tools on the Review tab or a third-party service. With the many options available for translating PowerPoint presentations, we decided it was best not to reinvent that part of the process. In fact, it's often easier just to give your translators a copy of your PowerPoint file so they can translate it in context. Update 2 also adds Section 508 compliance, including support for screen readers. Let's take a quick look at how to add alternate text in each of the apps. Presenter uses PowerPoint's built-in alternate text fields, so it's as easy as right-clicking an object, clicking Size and Position, and then expanding the Alt Text tab. Let me minimize size here. Now in some versions of PowerPoint, you'll have a title field and a description field. Presenter uses the description field, so you'll enter descriptive text here for your object, and then screen readers will read it. Quizmaker is very similar. You'll right-click an object, select Size and Position, and then select the Alt Text field, where you'll enter your alternate text. Engage is a little bit different. In the Media panel on the right side of the window, at the very bottom you'll see an alternate text field. This is where you'll enter alternate text for pictures, characters, videos, and flash files. Jumping back to PowerPoint, there is a new uh, feature in Presenter that lets you export your entire narration to a single MP3 file. So this is great for learners who need an audio-only version of your course. You asked for it and we listened. To use it, you'll come up to the Articulate tab on the ribbon and click Import Audio. This shows you all the narration in your, in your course, whether it was imported or recorded and then at the very bottom you'll click Export and then you'll give it a name and export it as an MP3 file. We know how important HTML5 content is, so we're constantly working to enhance it. With Update 2 we added support for more PowerPoint animations and slide transitions, and some existing features that are now supported in HTML5 include sidebar videos, word wrapping of lengthy slide titles in the menu, and elapsed in total time. We also redesigned the launch screen for Mobile Safari. Here you see the old launch screen on the left and the new on the right. 
We also redesigned the Slide Properties Manager and Presenter, giving you even more granular control and some new features. To view a larger version of any slide thumbnail, just hover over it. To customize the player features on a slide-by-slide -slide basis, use the new selectors in the lower right corner of the window. You can turn a feature on or off or set it to the default which matches your player. If you change your mind, click Reset and it'll change everything back to the default for that slide. You'll notice that there's a new addition to the bottom of the list. You can now turn your logo on or off for individual slides. We improved the quality of embedded videos by as much as 300%. Just install Update 2 and republish your project to see the improvements. Or, for best results, remove your videos, import them again, then republish. And finally, we added a new setting to the presenter player that lets you define what it means to lock the player at optimal size. Previously, when you locked the player, your published slides were locked at 720 pixels wide. Now, you can scale the published output up to 100% of the PowerPoint slide size. Just enter a percentage here, and notice that the actual slide dimensions are shown here in parentheses. There's a lot to love about Studio 13 Update 2, so I encourage you to install it right away. You can follow the link in your product confirmation email or use the Check for Updates feature in any of the apps. In PowerPoint, go to the Articulate tab on the ribbon, click Help and Support, then Check for Updates. In QuizMaker and Engage, just go to the Help tab and click Check for Updates.